Williams and this just into CNN. We are now learning some of the names of the alleged attackers. Nick Robertson is live from London with more. Nick. Well, Fanula, we're beginning to hear some of the names of people who are believed to have been inside uh, that shopping mall as part of the Al-Shabaab team. Uh, these names have been made known to CNN by uh, sources within Al-Shabaab. Uh, these names were, they say, released on a Twitter feed on an account that has now been closed down. Uh, but, but these people, these people, um, excuse me for a moment, these these people are now uh, believed to be among the hostage takers inside that building and what we're learning about them one of them is a canadian one of them is from the united kingdom here one of them is from finland three of them are from the united states one from minneapolis one from minnesota uh one from kansas uh their name their uh their names uh, all sound uh arabic in their nature or at least somali in their nature and all of them are quite young men, Fanula. The message that Al Shabaab is sending is that watch out, Westerners, because we are among you. And that's a, a message that uh, Shabab, Al Shabaab, has has been able to put across in recent years. And of course, now it can do it very clearly, very strongly, while everyone's looking. Perhaps no surprise that they would release these names while the hostage uh, situation is ongoing. And, and indeed, no surprise that they would turn this attack into the shopping mall into a hostage situation, because for terrorist groups like them, this allows them to protract and draw out the situation that they've created and thus get themselves publicity. So it does seem that they're trying to use this time that they've clearly planned for and calculated to get as much information out there. And in situations like this, often when the names are released that we may find in the coming weeks, that they will, these people would have recorded what, what are known as martyrdom videos. They expect to die. They'll have recorded videos stating why they've done it. We're trying to analyze here the nine names that we, we have so far. Is this all of the attackers um, inside the shopping mall possibly not um, we don't know how many of them may have been killed and and the Kenyan authorities haven't passed that on but certainly eyewitnesses said at least one woman uh, and possibly more were among the attackers and on this list of the nine people we have so far um, we don't we're not seeing any women's names so the implication is there may be more women there Going back over the past few years to the analysis that British intelligence officials have done, Jonathan Evans, the head of MI5, uh, until a few years ago in 2010 in a speech in September that year, laid out clearly his concerns about um, foreign operatives, if you will, fighting along al uh, alongside al-Shabaab. He said at that time, no one should... or. It, it, may, it may happen in the near future that we get terrorism on the streets here from people who are right now at that time fighting alongside al-Shabaab in, uh, in Somalia. So it's certainly intelligence officials have been very concerned about the big draw of um, people towards foreign jihadists, towards Somalia, where they've got weapons experience training. Um, when we look at this as well, the first ever American suicide bomber was uh, f was uh, working, if you will, fighting for Al Shabaab. He blew himself up in an attack on Mogadishu Airport in Somalia in 2011. So this track record and the names we're now hearing and the locations, the countries they've come from, um, deeply worrying. But for intelligence officials, probably at this time, not that surprising. But of course, a reason for major, major concern for Nula. And Nick, uh, just as we bring up these names now that we're able to show our viewers on screen, and uh, we'll go down through them, there you see a 22-year-old man from St. Paul, Minnesota, in the United States of America. He is not the only American there. There you see another 24-year-old. These are the names of the attackers, as Al-Shabaab has revealed them to CNN. And there we have someone named General Mustafa Nuruddin, who's 27 years old, also from the United States, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. There we have a Kenyan, 22 years of age, and uh, not uh, the only African there, because we know there are also some Somalis. A 24-year-old from London who has traveled to Kenya and has taken part in this uh, Al-Shabaab attack on the Westgate shopping mall. There a Somalian who is 20 years old, not surprising to have a Somalian among the Somali Islamist group. Um, a 23-year-old man from Finland and Nick saying there are so far no names of women uh, someone from Kismayo in Somalia 25 years of age 
And as we continue to see who these attackers' names are, there is a 24-year-old from Ontario in Canada. So now we have people from the United States, people from the Canada, one from the United Kingdom, and uh, we know also one, a couple from Somalia and one from Kenya. Now, Nick, the question is going to be uh, that now intelligence services have concrete reasons to be extremely concerned. Uh, will questions be asked about uh, why chatter wasn't picked up? in the last few weeks or months. Uh, and, and again, at this stage, we don't know if chatter was picked up. We don't know uh, how that was interpreted. Um, and one of the things we hear from intelligence experts around the world is that, that the level of as, as, as they term it, chatter at any one time can be exceptionally high. And of course, uh, on the heels, if you will, of September the 11th, a time of year when there traditionally uh, the sort of level of chatter goes up among uh, in jihadist circles. But this will, be, de this will definitely be something people will be looking back at. And in this situation, certainly intelligence agencies in the United States being one of the most powerful in that regard, will be sort of rolling back the clock, if you will, as we now know the facility that they have to look at what they've picked up in the recent days leading up to this to see if it provides any further clues is another attack likely where did this originate from who are some of the probably the key facilitators yeah. who are perhaps now still free on the streets of Nairobi somewhere.